Hey everybody, I have been playing as much Breath of the Wild as I can since purchasing the game on March 3rd. The most excited I've been for a game's release since Fallout 4 was pretty, pretty exciting. I remember playing The Witcher 3 at the time and losing interest because I just wanted to go to the store and buy Fallout 4. That didn't really work out. But Breath of the Wild has worked out big time. This game... The best compliment I can give it is that it feels like a Zelda game without feeling like the last, hmm, Majora's, Wind Waker, Twilight. The last four 3D Zeldas have all felt, except for Majora's was a little bit original, but Skyward, Twilight, and Wind Waker were Ocarina just repackaged with a little gimmick here. You're out on an empty ocean, Wind Waker... You're turning into a wolf and you're waggling your remote in Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. But Breath of the Wild gets back to what made the original Zelda so damn great. Is that the original Zelda was large and open and it was an adventure. It put you in the wild. It didn't even start you off with a sword and you had to go get that sword yourself. It asked you to wonder, hey... What the hell's in that cave over there in the first Zelda? And you went and you got a sword and you learned to explore caves and to talk to old men. And that was how you were going to get by in this world. It didn't give you a marker of which way to go. It just said, go wherever you want now that you've got the sword. If you run into enemies that are too powerful for your own good, when you die, you'll go back to the start and maybe you'll try an easier path. Breath of the Wild evokes that same sense of freedom an adventure in getting towards the end of the game in almost any manner you want. But let's watch this intro. Breath of the Wild feels like a reimagining of what the first Legend of Zelda and A Link to the Past promised. In that those games were about exploring a world, um, talking to the different characters, and, uh, and, and basically, okay, let's look at this section here. We see an old man, we see mountains off in the distance, we see some kind of church. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. And it just says, go for it. I mean, here's the hints. This would probably be the best thing. Let's go towards that first old man like you did in the very first Zelda, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You could go straight up to where Ganon is very, very quickly in this game, and you're going to encounter some incredibly tough enemies, and it's going to make a lot more sense for you to to level yourself up and deal with it in a different way. There's a great quest that happens at a certain point where I am in the game, and I'm not, I don't want to spoil anything. But there's a great quest that happens where you are given a bunch of visual clues and you need to find those areas on the map. There are no markers. There are no waypoints. You just need to look at these clues and find them on your own. That means you need to be aware of your surroundings. And when you're playing this game, because you're discovering everything... I was, I was very intrigued by uh, how flat this polygon was. Because you are in charge of discovering all this stuff as you go along, discovering merchants, discovering shrines, discovering people to talk to. You have to keep your eyes open and your ears open. You need to pay attention. It engages you in the world like many modern games just completely fail to do, where a lot of times in modern games you're just staring at a mini-map. Rewards and demands that the player is paying attention. All of this is going to be discovered on your own and that's what makes it feel a lot more like an actual adventure i was wondering how are they going to find a way to make this whole world interesting and the way they do that is by using sort of a scavenging system everywhere you go is going to is is going to eventually get you something out of out of doing that attacking enemies get you weapons a lot of people were skeptical about the weapons being damaged system and that can get a little bit old but it does provide an incentive to be hunting down enemies and, and getting something out of that or you're getting food and you're able to create health potions and different elixirs for faster speed more endurance um, stealthier 
being stealthier for a time. And this creates sort of a, an economy with your character and everything that you are encountering. One of the things I've criticized heavily in Skyward Sword, Twilight Princess, Wind Waker, uh, and in a way Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, is that these games start you off in a very, very safe and boring place. They spend too long telling you story and teaching you the controls in, in basically a kindergarten area where nothing can go wrong. A few minutes in and you're just, I'm always itching to get out of these areas. It's actually the reason why I haven't been able to get through Twilight and Skyward is that the opening sections are just too boring and I don't care. Wind Waker 2, by the time I got to the first dungeon and the first dungeon fell flat for me, it wasn't a dungeon, it was more like a bandit's hideout. I just had no interest. I thought, am I enjoying these puzzles? Am I enjoying this combat? No, I'm not. Now, Breath of the Wild starts you off in the wild um the only tutorial we've had is talking to that old man at any point there's going to be enemies that can attack you and look at the way they just put that piano in very uh, very timely it's like scoring a movie yet it's an open world game here's an enemy right away the first several hours of this game are all in in the shit of it fighting enemies solving puzzles just playing the game is what you're doing. So by the time... This is me trying to learn how to play. I don't even think I drew my sword out yet. So by the time that you actually reach the safety of a good fire or a village or some people, it feels earned. You feel like, I, I actually crave this. This part is very cool. If you can get these flurry rushes going, it makes every every encounter pretty fun. I mean, that's, that's a pretty uh, well-worn trope of third-person combat games but it's there for a reason the it should always be about like timing and dodging and attacking it's sort of like a light version of dark souls in that way but a little flashier so yes by the time you get to your first town you're going to crave it you're going to crave a place where you can just sit you can take a look at all the all the stuff that you've been scavenging and collecting the flowers the roots everything you've been getting from killing enemies and and turn those into potions and elixirs that, elixirs that you're going to be using later on. Now that you've gotten a handle on what it's like with these enemies and what you're going to need going forward. What really draws me into this game, other than the adventure of it, the layout of it, the excellent start and the pace, the discovery, the exploration, the way that these systems with the food is actually intriguing and the weapons is... And fundamentally how it controls as well. Now, Nintendo set the, the gold standard for two-dimensional platformers with the first Mario. They set the gold standard again for 3D platformers with Mario 64 and third-person action RPG games with Ocarina of Time. Third-person, sorry, three-dimensional games were very, very tough to figure out platforming. When do you jump? Do you look down the entire time? If it's a first-person game... So they simplified that and for one of the first times ever had an auto jump in Ocarina of Time and it worked perfectly. And it, it also meant that you you didn't have to worry that maybe you jumped too early or too late. If you were supposed to solve that puzzle in Ocarina of Time by jumping, you would do it automatically. Also, Ocarina of Time brought in the uh, the Z-Lock, which is used in, I mean, is the, the, one of the fundamental cores of, like, say, a game like Dark Souls and this game and, and many, many others. You just need to have that Z-Lock. Uh, when you're playing this game and they figured that out uh, the Zeldas after that built upon that and added the gimmicky controls like I mentioned before where the Wii mode is probably one of the worst things about the Nintendo Wii I love playing Mario Galaxy I hate having to waggle with the controls it's just it's imprecise Breath of the Wild has redesigned how Link moves you can see how fast he sprints in a large game like that that's super super important to make the running feel fast enough as fast as possible without seeming jerky too light or um s sort of hectic and, and odd looking he, he he but you want him to be a little faster than what you would probably think just so that you can navigate this world uh the climbing being able to climb almost any surface means that you can really approach an area and exploration in a very creative and unique way and then you have uh the combat which is smooth and they don't do anything too too crazy in that realm but they nail it 
and it feels just fine. But it's that game feel of maneuvering, being able to paraglide down from any surface that you've managed to climb yourself up to, and just allowing total freedom in that regard and making it feel great the entire time. I'm going to avoid showing you anything too interesting in this footage because I would really... I wouldn't appreciate this game being spoiled in any way for me. In fact, I wish I didn't watch any videos of it before. There's even some reviews I had read that were a little too spoilery. You don't, there should be a way for writers to be able to explain themselves without having to take literal examples from the gameplay. But why do, why do I love this game? Why do I crave playing it? I want to go back in and I want to explore these these missions that they give you. They're going to give you four main missions to do at one point. And the way you do those is still not very clear to me. I've gotten enough hints, but it's going to be up to me to find that out. And that kind of discovery is so compelling. And what I'm going to experience along the way to that discovery is so incredibly compelling. The game is feels amazing. It is charming as hell. And I haven't been this excited about exploring a video game world since... I don't know. Since Ocarina of Time. This... I thought I'd outgrown the franchise, and sometimes I often feel like I've just outgrown video games in general, but Breath of the Wild has reinvigorated my love in this kind of game, and just gaming in general. I fear that it might be similar to when I played The Last of Us, and it just ruined other action games at the time, and I, it took me a while to sort of come around and realize that you know games could be different, and that there is a large, large world of creative games out there. But Breath of the Wild, I cannot recommend enough. If you've if you've soured on the Zelda series like I had, if you've never played a Zelda series, if you love Zelda, I think if you just love video game ass video games, this is an incredible balance of systems, mechanics, controls, a wonderfully mysterious story. I'm about 10 hours in, but right now I feel like this is the best game I've played of this generation easily. I can't wait to finish this video up, hop back in, and explore more of it. I, I have that feeling like when you're reading a great book, like I used to do 10 years ago, in that I, I want to play this all the time, but I also want to savor it. Because you can only go through something for the first time, the first time. So if you haven't bought it already, I hope that I've convinced you to play. By the way, I'm playing on the Wii U. It looks just fine. There are some stuttering frame rates, but you're going to find that on the Switch as well. It's a great reason to buy a cheap Wii U. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more from this game, let me know in the comments below, or you can email GameThinkTalk at gmail.com or Twitter at GameThinkTalk. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye for now.